Hello guys, Robot1 here, and today I have for you my X1 Brotherhood Christmas Party Special um, <clears throat> deck profile for you guys of Pendulum Magicians. Don't know where I came, can't remember where I came. Um, I was X1 and won prizes, so I was assuming I was in, I was in the top 8. But, basically, <clears throat> we have got the X1 build of my Pendulum Magicians from the Brotherhood Christmas Party here. And I thought, seeing as I went X1 and did pretty good with them, I would give you guys the deck profile. So, this deck profile did really well for me at the event. Um, it was really good, it was really fun. The Brotherhood event was definitely, definitely really, really fun. Uh, just great event, all in all. Michael, the TO, was just a was just amazing there, did really really good with everything. But this deck played against um, round one a loss uh, because of double ash game one and game two in opening hand uh, to ABC True Draco. Round two spirals destroyed them. Round three trick stars just had a fun game with the trick star player really just discussed talked helped them out a bit um, taught them how to play with certain decks. Um, still won though. Um, then it was a Metal Foes player, uh, destroyed them, uh, just like, no, you're dead. Um, <laughs> he magic cylindered me, which was funny, but not for games, so, yeah. And finally, a ABC player, uh, who was late, and I just got a game one win, then just proceeded to beat him in the game two. But, <clears throat> all in all, I feel like this was a really good build of Pendulum Magicians for the day. Um, we had a good variation of meta there. We had um, ABC, we had Trick Stars, we had Spiral, we had Magicians. Uh, we had all sorts of different decks there. So we did have a very good variation of decks that were being played. But, yeah guys, this is my top um, top A uh, or X1 deck profile. Um, it was five rounds, so I don't know how many people were there, sadly. Um, it was definitely over 40. <clears throat> but... Yeah, guys, this was the deck profile, so let's just get into it. So we'll move the extra deck and side deck to the side. And we'll get into this. So we played three Harmonizing Magician. Honestly, you will always be playing three of this card. This card is amazing, just being able to give you an extra monster from your deck when it's Pendulum Summon from hand, and can only be Pendulum Summon from hand, <coughs> um, to be able to summon any Magician from your deck in defense position. And that monster can be used for Synchro Summons, it can be used for Pendulum Summons, it can be used for Fusion Summons. So it just generally gives you a lot and a lot of options to go by in this deck. So, Harmonizing Magician, definitely a very good card in this deck, and a great option as a free of. <coughs> uh, next we have Free Double Iris Magician. Um, you want to be playing Free of Double Iris Magician, it's your searcher, it gets you to your, your Pendulum Skate, uh, your Time Pendulum Graph. Let's let's zoom in a bit. Uh, it gets you to your time pendulum graph. It gets you to your star pendulum graph, and also it gives your pop monsters double damage to be able to go for that little extra push. <coughs> so double iris magician is definitely definitely a good option out for you as well. <coughs> Next we have pur free purple poison magician. Um, one of the best low scales in the deck, I have to be honest with you guys. Just the fact that even if this is negated in the extra deck to destroy a card, it will activate again in the graveyard if it is destroyed um, by, say, a Solemn Strike or a Deco Talker. <coughs> and just negate and destroy again. It's just really, really good just being able to get around your opponent's, fi uh, your opponent's things so you're able to play the game a little bit better. So... Triple Poison, because it's just one of the best scales. Plus, giving that 1,200 boost in the scale is very, very nice. <clears throat> My fur is all over the place, guys. I am very sorry. Um, next, we have Free Wisdom Eye Magician. Um, just, it's a high scale. It's a low scale. It's really anything you want it to be. It's your dreams. It's your nightmares. It's, it's the world outside. It's just like Wisdom Eye. It's everything you want it to be in a card. So, you play it free. Next, we play three of our Stratos, three Skullcrow by Joker. Um, you honestly just want to be playing three Skullcrow by Joker in, in any build of this, because it's your Stratos of the deck. It gives you your Wisdom Eyes, it gives you your Harmonizing, it gives you your... Um, <clears throat> it gives you any Magician you want in the deck, which is very vital to this deck, and it just really is a good card in general. Next, we have two Black Fang. Um, you only play two Black Fang, in my opinion, because this card is kind of bad, but really good at the same time. 
Um, there was a point in the game in the day where I got striked for free, and I summoned and I summoned this, a harmonizing and my iris magician. And I already had a Joker on board, so because of that, he striked me. I just summoned this back and was able to continue playing the game and go for game from that from there. <clears throat> This card was this card is just very very good for that fact, being able to just revive itself, revive any other magician from the graveyard. But because you're playing a pendulum deck, you don't normally have um, your spellcasters in the graveyard unless you XC summoned. So playing this up too is a lot better than playing it at free, in my opinion. Uh, next we have two performer pal pendulum sorcerer. Um, you just play two of this because it's searchable through cards like Duelist Alliance, through Skullcrab Joker. <clears throat> and also this card lets you search for Skullcrab Joker um, as well. So it gives you the ability to destroy... Um, it also gives you the ability to turn one, destroy your double iris, and then just search a Joker and a Pendulum Graph along with it. And you really do want to be seeing your time Pendulum Graph because it is literally the best, best, I say, trap card in this game right now, in my opinion. Just being able to destroy cards and send cards is just just really really good and iris magician um, and P perform power sorcery just gets you there a lot easier and gives you a joker in as well which is really good uh... we play two astrograph sorcerer uh, i played two astrograph sorcerer because astrograph sorcerer it's a card that allows you to just just get through resources really like you destroy something you get to summon this out and then you get to search for the same card you destroyed like <clears throat> What more is there to say? It's got a hand trappy esque effect as well, where if your opponent kills something you control, you can just summon it out, have a big beef, beefy board, monster on board, and then search what they destroyed. Like, it's got a hand tra trap esque effect, and it really just does help you in those really tight situations. So, two Astrograph, um, one Oath Dragon Magician. Um, we play one Oath Dragon <clears throat> because. It's really just your recycler. It allows you to re, re add your wisdom eyes. It allows you to re add your harmonizings. <clears throat> it just really allows you to go back into your extra deck, get stuff you need, so you can play the game and have resources for the next turn. So, <clears throat> um, free o one Oath Dragon is enough, in my opinion. Uh, for hand traps, we played two Ash Blossom and one Maxi. Uh, I feel like you ne don't really need to play free Ash Blossom, in my opinion, because Ash Blossom is like. It's a very good card, but because of the deck I'm playing, um, you don't really have a lot of space. So two Ash Blossom is enough, So and you don't really need to play a third. Um, and we play the one Maxi, obviously, because it's Maxi. You, you, you'll play Maxi regardless if it's, a, if it's up one. Uh, so that's the monsters. For spells, we play three Daughters Alliance. Um, such as your Pendulum Calls, such as your Double Iris, such as your Time Pendulum Graphs, such as anything, such as your Sorcerers. Um, just search as anything with Pendulum in its name, so obviously you are going to play free of this card. <clears throat> um, two Pendulum Call. Now, I see a lot of people playing one Pendulum Call, but in my opinion, two is the perfect number. Just because two pen with two Pendulum Call, it gives you a late game play, <clears throat> where if you, um, if you say... <sighs> that's in the way. Um, oh, I didn't even notice that black thing was there. Uh... Let's try and move that out of the way for you guys, because I don't really want that in the way. Um, sorry, uh, back where I was up. Um, I see people playing one Pendulum Call, but I feel three Pendulum Call is... Uh, three Pendulum Call. Two Pendulum Call is the right number. Just because it gives you a way to play your late game, and if, you're if your opponent is playing something like True Draco or ABC, something that gets rid of your scales really easy, then just having this as a resource, um, it gives you the ability to just build up just build up your pendulum scales so you're actually able to pendulum summon and you're actually able to play your pendulums you're actually just able to play the game a lot easier with time pe with pendulum call so two pendulum call in my opinion is a lot better than one pendulum call plus it means I can so side out on alliance um, game twos so it really does two pendulum call is a lot better in my opinion um, next we play two star pendulum graph um, I feel like two is the correct number of this card three is uh, too much and one is too little um, through testing, I tested this at 1, I didn't like it at 1 because of it could get banished very easily, it could get destroyed very easily. Um, I tried it at 3, I saw it too much, I didn't like it at 3. Um, I feel like 2 is the right number of this card whenever playing it, so 2 is enough. 
Um, two pot of desires. I uh, just just want to draw cards, really. It's a uh, sure it can be a nig nine for some people, but for, for others it's a plus one, and that plus one factor can really help you out in the game. <clears throat> and with pot of desires being a being a just a plus two in general, it, it's really really good in that opinion in that fact. Just being able to gain a plus one or a neg nine in some people's opinion. Uh, next, two wavering eyes. Um, we play two Wavering Eyes because Wavering Eyes is just like if you're dueling in a pendulum against the pendulum mirror match, you're going to be like, oh, Wavering Eyes? For four? Search Wavering Eyes? Banish your thing? Search? Burn you? Like, you're going to you're gonna be burning, you're going to be hurting your opponent a lot, so two Wavering Eyes is the right number in my opinion. <clears throat> Obviously, we side the third, but two Wavering Eyes in the main it is the right number. And even if you're not going up against the pendulum mirror match, it gives you plays such as burning your opponent, it gives you um, <clears throat> a way to search, um, it's a way, another way to destroy your double iris turn one, it's a, just a way to just get more pluses and more advantage in my opinion. Uh, next we play two Cosmic Cyclone, uh, we play two Cosmic Cyclone because it's just back row removal, good generic back, remo back row removal is always very good in the game, and seeing as it banishes it's able to get rid of stuff like reincarnation, it's able to get stuff rid of stuff like um, any Draco spell and trap card, it's just able to get rid of a lot of different stuff. <clears throat> um, but yeah, two Cosmic Cyclone, just really really good in that fact, uh, being able to being able to just deal with any back row that you want to deal with. And finally for spells you play one Ragegeki because it's Ragegeki best tri one of the best spell cards in the game uh, you, if you're playing a deck I would suggest you main it or at least side it <clears throat> no matter what you should always be playing a Raigeki so that's all the spells for traps we play two time pendulum graph because it's time pendulum graph um, always siding out one of them game two uh, if I'm going second if I'm going first we keep it in but <clears throat> you always want to be playing two of this card in your main uh, because it just really gets around your opponent. It's the best trap card in the game. Just being able to destroy one of your pendulum scales or one of your magicians on field, and <clears throat> and being able to destroy any card your opponent controls really, really is vital. Plus the fact that if it doesn't destroy one of the targets, um, it will send the card to the graveyard anyway, which is really, really good in my opinion. And the last trap card we play is one solemn scolding. Um, I was playing around with things that I could play as the 42nd card. Um, I was thinking I could play White Wing, I was thinking I could play Zark, I was thinking I could do all of this, but when it came to the meta options, um, I thought, why not play Scolding? It's sure it's 3k, but I don't always have back row set. If I do have a back row set, it's usually Time Pendulum Graph, and I'm going to flip it in the standby phase, um, if I have this on board. And it, sure it's 3k, but 3k to negate anything, being that a spell, a trap card, a summon, a... Uh, inherent summon, a card that was summon a card, an effect, a hand trap, uh, evenly matched, like anything um, that you could think of. This card is actually just really, really good in that fact, and I really do feel like Solemn Scolding is just one of the best cards in the game, with my opinion. Like, sure, I did a, um, a good old bad segment, but uh, even though it's it's even though it's got its downsides, in a deck like this, it really doesn't have the downsides that um, most cards do. So, <clears throat> one Solemn Scolding purely because it just negates everything in the game and 3k isn't a lot when you're negating anything. So, those are the traps. Um, we'll st let's go for the extra deck. Obviously we have that fine Brotherhood token, you know, just representing my um, family over there, the Brotherhood. <laughs> uh, so yeah, one Brotherhood. Um, but for extra deck cards, we played one Akashic Magician. Um, Akashic Magician is like, it's just there for, to punish bad players, really. Um, if your opponent places something in a, a, a non-used Echo Monster Zone and it's something really good, then you can just get rid of it. Um, and just going to say this now, it's got damage what it's fa the factory damage one. Mate, mate Ziad, Gen X Chaos, um, help me get this one, so thanks man. Uh, Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs> but yeah, one action Magician, uh, one Deco Talker because... It's a rank free. It's a link free that takes up. Um, that gives you two extra monster zones. There's nothing wrong with that. Plus, being able to negate targeting is really good. Plus, and um, it helps me with. An, it's one of my OTK options, so it's really good. 
Uh, one Borolo just to steal anything, just to decrease anything, just to really just deal with opponents in any way, shape, or form. Uh, one Abyss Dweller for those decks that may be using a graveyard, maybe having an extra deck. Like, BA is prevalent is in ways, so one Abyss Dweller for that. One Babuska, the best rank 4 in the game. If you're not playing it, you're not playing a rank 4 engine. So, one Babuska. Uh, one Tornado Dragon. Don't really make it that much. Um, I made it once at the event for the Metal Force player, just to deal with his count combination, um, his counters. So, it, it was it was good for that, but rest not really anything else. So, one Tornado Dragon. Uh, one Time Star Pendulum. Uh, one Time Star Magician. Um, the card, since the card has came out, has fallen in its usability. Um, there's just a lot more better rank 4s to make going first, uh, so I feel like one of this card is still necessary, but um, playing out more than one isn't really required anymore, so one time star pendulum, magi one time star magician, uh, one performer power trapeze magician, it's an OTK option, it says screw uh, trick stars, it's just really good in that effect. <clears throat> Uh, one Supreme King Dragon Dark Rebellion, an OTK option again, it gets me over any monster my opponent has. Um, just being able to be like, oh, your monster's attack is now zero, and I'm gaining all of that attack. It's just really, really good, and it really helps get that extra kick in to kill my opponent. One Supreme King Dragon Clearwing. Um, it's Rageki on legs, essentially. Like, you don't really want to use it for anything else. If you're making it, you're making it to nuke your opponent's monster zone, so... Not really anything else to be said there. Uh, one Enlightenment Paladin. Graveyard recyclability is really nice. Um, plus the fact that it combos well with the deck. Being able to gain that 1200 boost or double damage. Or even just being able to just be like, oh, um, attack. You take whatever damage you have um, of the monster. It, it's, re it's really good in that in the, at times like that. Uh, one Omega. It's Omega. You're playing it because it's Omega. Not really anything to say. Ignister! Because it's Ignister, um, just being able to destroy any pendulum card on the field, then shuffle away anything, really, really good, in my opinion. Um, one Bills, didn't make it at all. Um, to be honest, it was a side out option for uh, one of my extra cards, so as you saw, it's for si sub Spiral Double Agent, um, Double Helix, but. Yeah, it didn't. It wasn't really seen much. And one Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom, just because it gi just because I can be like, oh, I take your Masterpiece effect, I take your Dragon Buster effect, which happened. I did take an ABC Buster effect. Um, I take your just any effect really, which is just really, really, really useful when going up against any deck with boss monsters. That I can just be like, oh, you have a boss monster. I'm gonna take that effect of your boss monster. So really, it really did does come in handy at times like that. So, yeah, now onto the side deck. So for side deck, we did we did play the one double helix. Um, obviously, this is the uh, Reaper target <laughs> um, for the <clears throat> for the A B C for the spirals. Um, I did use it against spiral, but he had already used the helix by Ash the helix, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, um, one he two, one helix, um, two draw not bird. Um, just side in against any deck that searches a lot, any get deck that draws a lot. It came in against Trick Stars and won me the game against Trick Stars. Two Reaper, as I said for the Helix. Don't really need to explain this. Uh, two Ogre, because it just deals with anything that is use X face up effect. Just good side deck card and hand trap. Like <clears throat> a lot of hand traps came in going second. Uh, came in when I was going second, so I really just wanted to decide to have hand trap a lot of hand trap options to go second. So. Most of my hand traps did end up in this side deck. Um, Kaiju package, one Gamma Seal, one Kamungus, one Dogoran, and one Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Actually won a game by killing my own Babuska and then summoning a Dogoran to their board and a Kamungus to my board. <coughs> and then just was able to make Dark Rebellion, Supreme King, and just game him with through that, which was really, really cool. Um, Third Wavering Eyes, because it's Wavering Eyes, uh, you're always going to be signing the third just in case. Um, a second Scolding in case for when I'm going sec going first, I can just side this in and be like, No! I'm going to say no to anything he does. So, second Scolding. And two evenly matched for when I'm going second against any deck that can create a big board. Um, normally sided this in against like any Pendulum deck, ABCs, um, uh... 
not trick stars, you never say this against trick stars in my opinion, um, in spirals, so, yeah, just all of that, but, yeah guys, that is the deck profile, um, it really is a good deck, Pendulum Magicians, in my opinion, uh, just wanted to say that just one more thing before we end the video though, um, Michael, thanks for putting on a great event, uh, at the Brotherhood Christmas party, um, I'm happy I went X1, for some reason every year at the Brotherhood Christmas party I do really good there, <coughs> but, yeah guys, that, this is just the deck profile, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you tried to play this deck profile, I hope you try it out, um, I just hope you enjoyed it in general, and I hope you try out these Pendulum Magicians, because this list will still be very, very good, even coming into next year, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you guys want to play Pendulum Magicians for yourselves, and I hope you enjoy, you kind of try it out yourself and see if you enjoy it, but, yeah guys, if you liked the video, don't forget to smack the like button to show that you liked it, and that you appreciate these sorts of videos coming out from me. Um, such as deck profiles, uh, don't f and if you wanted to have a discussion about any of my choices, pre make sure you comment in the comment section below, to, so we can have a discussion about these choices, maybe improve this deck a little more, love to hear your guys' input, um, and if you want to see more videos from me, press the subscribe button so you can get them in your, in your, <coughs> your subscription bar, and also press the notification button so you can be notified of any of my videos coming out later on in the get later on but yeah guys thanks for watching the video as i said don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more videos and <clears throat> that's it guys we're all about one signing out thanks for watching guys